Okay, so welcome back. This is part three in our series where we discuss the concept of a ring tester. And the purpose of a ring tester, as we discussed in the previous videos, is to test a transformer to see whether it's good or bad. And as you can see here on our uh, bench, uh, we have a transformer and we're applying a pulse of voltage, a square wave, and the result is this ringing oscillation of the voltage across the transformer. And as we mentioned before, the basic concept is uh, if there's a lot of rings, then it's probably a good transformer. And if there's a few rings, as you can see here, it gets stamped out very quickly. Uh, it's probably a bad transformer. In the previous videos, we looked at specifically this type of transformer here, which is an ATX power supply switching transformer. It's a high frequency transformer. We looked at modeling that in LT SPICE to um, better understand the characteristics of the transformer. And we also looked at uh, applying a short circuit, simulating a short circuit and applying the short circuit and looking at the number of rings. And at the end of the discussion, we came up with the concerns that it's really very complicated and there's a lot of things that it depends on. And the number of rings you get on a scope trace like that depends on a lot of different things. So you really need to be wary about um, just merely applying a ring tester to a transformer and thinking you know whether it's good or bad. Basically it comes down to you pick up a transformer and you need to answer the question, if I apply a pulse through a capacitor, how many rings means it's a good transformer and how many rings means it's a bad transformer? And as we discussed, that's a really difficult question to answer. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at um, a different type of transformer, which is this transformer right here, which is a power transformer, and it's 117 volt to 12 volt AC. And in our video series, Understanding Transformers, we looked at this and we modeled this transformer, and we looked at some of the characteristics and things such as saturation and inrush. I encourage you to look at those videos to better understand how transformers work. Uh, in this video, we're going to apply a ring test to this transformer, and you can imagine it's quite a bit different from the switching transformer we used previously. And we're going to look at some more characteristics and complications that can make it more difficult for a ring test to, to really answer the question, is this a good transformer or a bad transformer? So first of all, I've got this set up uh, as I had before with the switching transformer. We've got a low frequency square wave that goes from 0 to 10 volts. And we're putting that into the high voltage winding of the transformer through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. You can see it over here. And we're tapping off the oscilloscope to measure the voltage across that high voltage winding to see what the results of the ring test are. And you can see on the scope we've got this oscillating and very well damped uh, voltage trace which is the voltage across this um, inductance of this transformer winding. So the concept is, like we said, if there's few rings, it's damped, probably means it's a bad transformer. If there's a lot of rings and it's not very well damped, uh, it probably means it's a good transformer with no short circuit. The basic question is, is this a good transformer? If Even if you're looking at that damped trace, that oscillations, does this mean it's a good transformer or is it a bad transformer? Think about it and answer it to yourself. It's got maybe one, two, or three rings. Is that a good transformer or a bad transformer? Well, it turns out this is a perfectly fine transformer. And because of the characteristics of this power transformer, the 60 hertz power transformer, it naturally has a very damped response. So now to prove that, I can simulate a short-circuited winding by connecting this wire together, and you can see this is what a short-circuited winding might look like if it was a perfect short-circuited turn. So again, it's really difficult if you take a transformer uh, to determine how many rings do I expect because it gets really, really complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to LT Spice and we're going to look at the model of this transformer and see if we can match it to the bench test results and that way we can understand better what's going on in this particular transformer to see how the characteristics might be 
very much different from the switching transformer and we can see what some of the more limitations are of a ring test on different types of transformers. Okay, so here we are in LT Spice, and uh, if you looked at the previous videos in the series, you probably recognize this very simple circuit, which is our ring tester circuit. And we have a 0 to 10 volt step pulse of voltage. Uh, we've got a 50 ohm output impedance of our function generator. Uh, we've added a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to give us an oscillating resonance between the capacitor and this inductance of this transformer. And here we have a model of the power transformer we're going to be working with. Now, I encourage you to look at the series Understanding Transformers where we go through with our power transformer, our 117 volt to 12 volt power transformer, where we figure out the resistance of the winding and the inductance of the winding and come up with this general model in LT Spice of a transformer and we've got a secondary winding. Uh, and here is, like we showed in the previous video, a simulation of a single turn short circuit on the winding and we've got it open right now so there's no short circuit. So we're using this model we developed before and what we're going to do is see how it responds with the ring test um, circuit where we apply a pulse. Now what I did is as in the beginning, I showed you the response of this transformer on the scope, and this is what we saw in the beginning of this video. This is the waveform, and you can see it's damp after a few cycles of this um, waveform, so it's very highly damped, but this is a good transformer. So we're hoping when we apply this ring test circuit in LT Spice, we'll get a response, a voltage across the transformer that is very close to this, very highly damped. So let's run this and see what we get. So here is the response of the um, ringing circuit. You can see it goes up 10 volts and over half a second, you can see there's a lot of oscillations and it's a lot different from this. So clearly there's something going on with our model that's not working. Our 60 Hertz model isn't working in the real world when we apply, um, in this case, it's like 500 Hertz oscillation and here we're showing two milliseconds per division. So it's two, four, six, eight. So maybe around 10 milliseconds, this thing should be damped. Here's 50 milliseconds. It's still ringing a lot. So we need to take a look at our model and see what's going on, why it's not working. Well, after some head scratching, um, I came up with what I believe is the issue. And that is core losses. In a transformer, you've got a resistive component which simulates the losses in the iron core. And presumably, because this is a big heavy core, there's a lot of losses, a lot of watts loss in the, in the um, winding. So what I did is I added a 25k ohm uh, resistance across the winding to simulate the core losses. Now, I'm not sure if there's a way we can actually measure that other than to make the response match what we saw on the bench in terms of damping. So I'm going to run this and see what we get. And here is the response and I'm going to zoom in. And we are a lot closer to what we see on the bench. So here's what we see on the bench and here's two volts and here's two volts and you can see we get the initial peak, then another peak, and then the third one is below two volts. And that's about what we got here. So I'm reasonably confident that this core loss model is fairly accurate for us to determine what's going on with this transformer. Now what we can do is we can measure how this changes, how this response changes with a simulated single turn short. And we saw before that it should be damped out almost immediately with very few rings. So here I've got a, I've got our shorted turn model with a 0.1 ohm resistor like we had before. But what I also did is I increased the inductance of this single turn. We had 0.001 millihenries of inductance. Here I've increased it to 0.1 millihenries and we'll add the short circuit and see what happens. And here is the resulting waveform. And you can see it's almost exactly what we saw before 
maybe a little bit more damped, but it seems like we're getting a decent response. So the difference between a shorted turn and an unshorted turn, you know, maybe there's only one ring to determine the difference between a shorted turn and an unshorted turn. And again, I encourage you to look at the previous videos on the, the ring tester. There's a lot more complications in the ring tester that can affect this. But we can see that, you know, different transformers have different characteristics. And in some cases, this resistive core loss may be a factor with the switching transformer, maybe not. So it really can get very complicated. So just one other example of how a ring tester, unless you really, really know what what transformer you've got and what its characteristics are, the results of a ring test may be of little or no use to you. So hopefully this has helped you uh, realize how useful it can be to uh, get involved in doing software simulations and comparing those to actual bench testing because, you know, when you get a result on the bench, it's one thing to just accept it and say, oh, that's how it is, but it's another thing to say, what is really causing that? And why is my model not working? There must be something else going on. And there's a great opportunity to learn about other aspects that you may not be aware of. So I really encourage you, um, think about learning how to do software simulations, do bench tests, and actually learn on your own and try to figure things out on your own. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views, really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.